gather together here in the sight of God and in the presence of this company to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Marriage is an honorable estate, instituted of God and commended by St. Paul to be honorable among all men. It is not therefore to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but reverently, soberly, and in the fear of God. Do you, Stuyvesant Peabody Keys, take Victoria Stafford to be your lawful wedded wife, and do you solemnly promise that you will love, honor, and cherish her until death shall separate you? I do. Do you, Victoria Stafford, take Stuyvesant Peabody Keys to be your lawful wedded husband, and do you solemnly promise to love, honor, and cherish him until death shall separate you? I can't. I, I can't. I, I don't know why, but I, I can't. I'm sorry, Stuyvesant. I, I'm sorry. I can't. I, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Dear. Do you, Gardner Huntington Standish, take Victoria Stafford to be your lawful wedded wife? And you solemnly promise that you will love, honor, and cherish her until death shall separate you? I do. <clears throat> and uh, do you, Victoria Stafford, take Gardner Huntington Standish to be your lawful wedded husband? And do you solemnly promise that you will love, honor, and cherish him until death shall separate you? Huntley III, take Victoria Stafford to be your lawful wedded wife, and you solemnly promise that you will love, honor, and cherish her until death shall separate you? I do. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> do you, Victoria Stafford, take Atherton Huntley III to be your lawful wedded husband? And you solemnly promise that you will love, honor, and cherish him until death shall separate you? I'm not going to have my son made ridiculous. Not one of these invitations is going to be mailed out until I know for a certainty that there's going to be a wedding. You're being unreasonable, Ned. Of course the children are going to be married. Of course the children are going to be married. That's what I said. Everything's settled. Why, even the invitations are all ready to be sent. Say, in this family, that doesn't mean a thing. Why, when I walk at the bar of my club and find that the odds against this marriage taking place are now quoted at 11 to 5, I feel that the situation calls for frankness and clarification. Now, Father. Father, please. But of course she's going to marry me. Why, she... she... She's wearing my ring. Yeah, you'd been smart. You'd only made a down payment on it. Ed, you're getting what emotional. Is I hardly think so. I wouldn't be much of a father if I stood by and saw my boy suffer the humiliation of those other three. But this time it's father, this is outrageous. I mean, you are going through with it. You are going to marry me. Aren't you, dear? Well, of course I am, Oliver. I'm almost positive. Almost? Oh, Do you hear that? Almost. Oh, Why, if that gets down to the club, the odds will go to 20 to 1. Victoria, for heaven's sake, you talk this whole thing over. Darling, 
Uh, Father and I don't want to seem unduly concerned, but if you could make up your mind, it would be so nice. I'm trying to, Mother. Here, you see, she's trying. I don't see why Victoria should be subject to this inquisition. We love each other very much, and she's already told you we're going to be married. Yes, that's what she told the other three. Yeah. Oh, not really. I don't know why I couldn't marry the others. I, I just couldn't. I. Perhaps it was because I didn't love them enough. But you, you do love me enough, don't you, Victoria? Of course I do, Oliver. I'm practically certain. Practically? Oh, yeah. Now, wait, 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 wait. Now, let's be perfectly calm. Victoria, I know you wouldn't do anything intentionally to hurt Oliver. You know I wouldn't. Then I believe I have a solution. Now, I want you to go away for a month, away from your family, your friends, away from Oliver. I want you to go off someplace all by yourself. Take the whole situation over thoroughly, and then make up your mind once and for all. Nay, no, this is so unnecessary. I've already had it out with Victoria. I've made all the arrangements. Dr. Parkinson is standing by, and... And we couldn't possibly return all those presents again. I'm not asking you to return anything. Just delay the wedding until Victoria can make up her mind on some sort of a permanent basis. Father, so long as I'm satisfied, I don't see why you should go Oliver, over and... your father is right. I've hurt too many people already. Uh, where will you go? Oh, I don't know. Maybe to my summer place in Maine. I've got some work there I should finish anyway. I'll call you every night. <laughs> No, Oliver. Don't call, don't write. No flowers, no wires. Just give me a month. And at the end of that time, I'll send you a wire with one word saying yes or no. And if it's yes, Oliver, believe me, no power in this world can keep me from going through with our marriage. I'll... I'll wait for your wire. Oliver... Like it, Nancy? Oh, I like it very much. I'm sorry, Mr. Everett. I have to leave. I have a date. I understand. <laughs> Operator, get me Western Union, please. Western Union, I'd like to send a wire to Oliver H.P. Harrington, 928 Park Avenue, New York City. The message is... Yes, yes, yes. Signed, Victoria. H.P. Harrington, despite the fact that Victoria Stafford has shamelessly walked out on three previous marriages, take this woman for your lawful wedded wife, and you solemnly promise that you will honor and cherish and love and love and love her forever and ever? Yes, I do. I, uh, I, uh... Go ahead, Oliver. <clears throat> yes, I do. I, I most certainly do. I, I do. 
To you, Victoria Stafford, now that you have wired Oliver H.P. Harrington, saying positively that you would marry him, take this man for your lawful wedded husband. Well, I... I... I do. I certainly do. I should say I do. All right, Oliver, the ring, please. <clears throat> I'm quite aware of the procedure. Very good, Oliver. And now, at last, because Victoria has finally made up her mind that you, Oliver, are the one and only one for her, I hereby pronounce you man and... Stop it! Stop this wedding! You can't marry Oliver H.P. Harrington. You don't love Oliver H.P. Harrington. You love me, not Oliver H.P. Harrington. It's a lie. I do, too, love Oliver H.P. Harrington. You've always... You've always loved me. You've never really loved anyone but me. No, I don't love you. I don't even know you. <laughs> don't fight it, Vicky. You love me. You've never loved anyone else. That's why you couldn't marry any of the others. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Stop us now. thing I knew I was at a wedding. A wedding? What wedding? Now, really, Vicky. How's oh, it? It's, it's, it's ending on my dream. It, but it can't be. It's, people don't just dream up people. Oh, but people don't just step out of people's dreams. It's, it's... You can't marry Oliver H.P. Harrington. You don't love Oliver H.P. Harrington. You love me, not Oliver H.P. Harrington. Oh, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. I'm still dreaming. That's what it is, I'm dreaming. <laughs> he's not here at all. Oh, I'm here all right. Oh, he's here all right. Say, Sugar Plum, uh, how about a little breakfast? No, no, no. Oh, no, I know what it is. It's just in my mind. That's all, it's just... <laughs> Nobody can see him but me. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> oh, oh, just a minute. Just a minute. I have to get this on. Oh, thank you very much. Can I take your baggage, miss? Oh, my baggage, yes. How? Oh. Right. What's that end of turning in here? What's he doing? Oh, no! It wasn't like this. How? Oh, no. You know, I don't get this at all. Why do you always dream me up? In this silly outfit. But is it... Are you trying to intimate that... That we... That you've been in other dreams of mine? Oh, dozens, oh, no. but... Uh, <clears throat> this is the first time I've made a personal appearance. Oh, but that's impossible. <laughs> I don't dream. <laughs> I never dream. Well, come now, Vicky. Oh, well, then I don't remember. You mean to say you don't remember that... Uh, Wonderful night in Paris. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or that uh, moonlight oh, no. swim. Oh, no. Oh, but you... 
What do you want, anyway? Oh, it's not what I want, Sugar Plum. It's what you want, or rather what you don't want. And the way I look at it, way down deep, you don't want to get married. I don't. At least not to Mr. Oliver H.P. Stuffed Shirt Harrington. Mr. Oliver. 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 Oh, Oliver. He's going to be at the station to meet me. Look, he's... he's oh, dear. And is he going to be surprised to see me? Well, he's not going to. Not if I can help it. Oh, dear. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> it does seem to be somewhat of a problem. It appears you've got a hot Indian on your hands. Well, hot or cold, you're getting out of here right now. Now, go on. Oh, it's go no on, use, Vicky. I'll only pop right back. Think... You know, I've got a feeling I'm going to be around a while. But... Coming in. Grass oh. the station. Look, we're pulling in. We're pulling in. What's Oliver going to say? What's he... If he sees me here like this, and with a strange end in. Oh, I'm not so strange, Sugar Plum. You remember that uh, moonlight swing? Oh, no. Oh, no. At least you could have the decency to come in here while I change my clothes. If you don't mind, it would be very nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate your kindness. Okay, Sugar Plum, but you're getting off at provincial. You won't call me Sugar Plum. Have it your way, Sugar. <laughs> Plum. Grand Central Station. <laughs> Let me see that. Stafford, Fifth Avenue. Should I take you to Lawson and Farm? No, I'll deliver this myself tomorrow. Only six more months of Christmas, you know. <laughs> Not a bad address. What are you doing in my... You get out of here this... If you think I'm going to take you home with me, well, you, you've got another thing. That's... Now look, Sugar oh. Plum, why fight destiny? Hmm? Why don't you just relax and enjoy it? When are you going to go back to wherever you came from? I don't know, babe. I guess when you get me out of your mind, out of your mind, out of your life, that's me. Well, I don't know what you're talking. I don't think you do either. It's no mystery. When people dream, they express their secret desires. So oh. what you really want is someone you're honest oh. to goodness in love with. I Obviously, you weren't with any of the others. You only thought you were. <laughs> oh, well, that just explains everything. I suppose all the time I was engaged to the others, what I really wanted was you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Couldn't have put it better myself. Well, now that we understand each other, would you mind just hopping out of this cab and out of my life? Look, Vicky, Please? why don't you just give up? Hmm? We've always been so close, like two peas in a pod, like two pages in a book. Like, uh, those two up there? Like... Ah, those moonlight swims.
sorry. <laughs> I thought it was the uh, spiders. <laughs> As I started oh, to say, spiders. how how do you figure Chicky's choice is going to beat Donnie Deer by five legs? It's a muddy track. He's got to one. I figured it out the way he oh, ran oh. the Pacific Handicap. Oh, there's a two on a moonlight swim. There's a page in the... Oh, driver. Lady, you want to just keep riding around the park? Well, uh, um, if you'll just take me to... Seven is... Okay, lady. Shh. 785th Avenue. Well, has uh, any anybody been asking for me? Just Mr. Oliver. Has. Oh, Mr. Oliver. Oh, is he here already? He's in the breakfast room with your mother and father. And if I may say so, Miss Victoria, he seems quite upset. Well, of course. He would be. here in this very house and promised if she said yes, she'd go through with it. That no power in this world would stop her. That she... oh, oh, darling. Darling. Oh, oh, mother. Hello, oh, father. Oliver, darling. Victoria, I've just come from the station. Oh, oh the station? Oh, you were at the station, weren't you? Of course I was, but where were you? Well, I, uh, oh, I wasn't there. But of course you were there. Oh, no, no, I, I, uh, didn't come down by train. I, I drove. There you see, she drove. Drove? Yes, I drove. I, I, Oh, uh, you, uh, you drove? Yes, I was driving down with the, uh, the Spaldings. They were coming down, so I just drove down with them. Oh, the Spaldings. Oh, Oliver. Yes, Mother, the Spaldings. Isn't this wonderful? But, darling, that isn't possible. Oliver. The Spaldings are in France. I got a cable from them yesterday. Oh, you did? Well, how... Oh, the Spaldings. Did I say the Spaldings? I didn't mean those. I meant the Wilsons. I always get them mixed up. You know, the tennis balls. <laughs> Victoria, why didn't you let me know you were driving? Well, I... Oh, Oliver, what difference does it make? I'm here now, and... And all alone. I mean, uh, we're together, you and I, and... Oliver, you do love me, don't you? Well, of course, Victoria. Well, well, then you can just better love me more and more and harder and harder and stronger and stronger and love me and love me and love me and love me. And... <clears throat> A gentleman to see Miss Victoria. Ah. Uh, a gentleman? A young gentleman. What's he wearing? I mean, uh, well, I can't imagine who it could be. He said you were expecting him. Well, tell him I'm not expecting him and that I'm, that I'm busy and that I can't see him. Oliver, Oliver. You seem quite insistent, miss. Well... Tell him I'm with my fiancé, whom I love very much, and that I don't want to see him, and that I don't want to see any young men, that I'm not interested in young men. I, I mean, except Mr. Oliver. And, and tell him to go away. Very well, miss. And stay away. Yes, miss. Well, I'm very sorry, sir, but Miss Victoria... I'll said... tell him when he comes in. Hello, Vicky. Say, this is quite a wigwam you've got here. Elevators and slaves. And this, of course, is Oliver. Say, I thought you'd be a little stouter. 
And this would be Horace. How are you? <laughs> and Martha, how are you? Well, I'm fine, thank you. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> Uh, Victoria, I don't believe we've met this young man. No, I, I don't believe you have either. Um, mother, uh, uh, father, this is, uh, this is, uh, George. Yes, miss? Well, Victoria, no one has ever called Benson George. We just don't do it. <laughs> no, this is George. Uh, they're both George. This is George Benson, and this is George, uh, uh, George, too. Doesn't the young man have a last name? Who? Oh, yes, of course he does. Everybody has a last name, Father. Um, his name is George. Uh, uh, George. <sighs> Moccasin. Moccasin. No, uh, Macassin. George Macassin. How do you do, Mr. Macassin? Just fine, thank you. And you? Just fine. That's fine. Well, you certainly are looking fine, George. <laughs> uh, well, I mean. <laughs> well, <laughs> clothes make the man, they say. <clears throat> so how do you like it? Picked it up after I left you this morning. It was sort of a swap. A swap? Yes, I followed a fellow down the subway and kind of uh, swapped him on the head for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mother, I'm going to have to go upstairs, just sort of uh, brush up a bit. And uh, I'd like to have a word with you, Mr. 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 McCassin, would you... Uh, nonsense, darling. Come and have your breakfast. It's already That's done. a good idea. You know, I, I'm starving. <clears throat> I've been... Uh, thank you, old boy. I, I've been trying to have breakfast all morning, but... Uh, <laughs> you know Vicky. <laughs> Just a moment. Hmm? I understand you to say you were with Victoria this morning? Oh, certainly. Hmm. We came in together. Victoria, I thought you drove down for me with the Wilsons. Oh, well, I, I did. I mean, uh, we did, uh, together with the Wilsons. The Wilsons? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Maggie and Frank. Who? The people we drove down with from Maine. Maine? Oh. Oh, them. <laughs> a lovely couple. He's <laughs> such, such a... And so is she. <laughs> and I... I take it that you and Mr. McCasson were together up in Maine. Well, uh, yes, we, uh... Well, Vicky, you mean you... You haven't told them about us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not yet. It... <sighs> Victoria, just what is there to tell? Well, uh, um... I thought you went up there to work. Oh, <clears throat> oh well, I, I did. I, I, uh, I had a few things I wanted to finish, and... and... Where does Mr. McCasson fit in? Oh, Mr. M... He's my model. Model? And, uh, well, that's why I brought him back. It's, uh, I'm doing a, uh, a figure of him. It's, it's really going to be wonderful. The best thing I've ever done. And I, uh, I, uh, haven't quite finished with him yet. <laughs> so I guess I'll be around a while. <laughs> well, well, if he's your model, I, I don't see why he has to live. Oh, Oliver, I didn't thank you for these wonderful orchids. Really, I, I bet you brought them all the way down to the station just so to give them to me. Yes, and I was standing there holding them like a fool, and there was so much confusion, I, I thought I'd miss you. Mm -hmm. Confusion? Mm. Yes. What do you mean, confusion? There was an Indian or something caught in a woman's drawing room or something. And... An Indian? <laughs> <coughs> well, Oliver, how silly. What would an Indian be doing in New York? Now, if it were Oklahoma or Wyoming. Mm. I've got news for you. As a matter of fact, this is a very interesting George. story. <laughs> I think we've, we've got a lot of work to do, and, and uh, you see, while the light is still good, and I'll show you to your room. <laughs> what about my break? Well, I'll have it sent up. Yes, if you don't mind. Oh, Oliver, darling, I'll, I'll, I'll see you tonight, but I, I do have a lot of work to do. While the light's still good. I don't like this at all. Certainly seems irregular. Father will never understand it. Then let's not tell him. No need to stir up unnecessary trouble. You just leave it to me. By the time you and Father arrive for dinner tonight, I assure you that young man will be out of here bag and baggage. I certainly hope so. Don't you worry, my boy. I've handled Victoria's little eccentricities before. Everything's going to be all right. Well, I... I... I certainly hope so. I'm sure it will be. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye. 
I tell you, Martha, the sooner we get that daughter of ours married, the better it will be for all concerned. Hmm. And as for this latest nonsense of hers, I'm going upstairs and throw him out of here if I have to do it with my bare hands. Horace, maybe that wouldn't be too wise right now. Remember what Oliver was saying about an Indian being caught in a woman's drawing room on the train? Well, what about it, Martha? Well, I think... I'm not absolutely certain about this, but I think that young man was wearing moccasins. Moccasins? Well, we'll see about that right now. Now, look, let's get one thing straight. You're not staying here. Victoria! Oh, yes, Father. Uh, just a minute. Come here, come here. Shh. Hurry up. Hurry up. Now, see here, Victoria. Your mother and I have been more than lenient these last few years, but this time you've... Uh, You've, uh, that is, uh, I, yes, uh, Father? Victoria, I'll come right to the point. I've already promised Oliver that Mr. McCasson will be out of here in, in... Oh, now, Horace, really. Oh, what a beautiful necktie. Mr. McCasson, is that quite clear? You ought to be out of this house in exactly five minutes or I shall be forced to call the police. Oh, no, I, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't do that, Horace. You know, if the police come over here, they'll probably drag me over to the police station, and there'll probably be a lot of newspaper men there, and they'll probably ask a lot of questions, and uh, who can tell what might slip out? Slip out? <clears throat> yes, you know those reporters, always looking for some uh, juicy bit of... Uh... Victoria, just what has transpired between you and this, this, this person? Oh, no! It's, uh, it's not Victoria. It's not Victoria? I uh, seem to recall a little incident in Paris, the uh, Folie Bergère, a little number called Babette. Babette? Victoria. Father, I, I swear I... Uh, you're the one who didn't want Mother to... I get... never said a word. I, I don't know how he found out. Besides, you know, I, I was completely innocent, only covering up for Cousin Charlie. Cousin Charlie was shooting grouse in Scotland. How did he know that? You're the only one who knew anything about the whole affair. Yeah, I... I thought so, too. Father, Father, come here. Father, I... I wouldn't press Mr. McCasson too far. Mm -hmm. I just... Well, I guess the whole thing's pretty clear. All right, McCasson, how much do you want? Oh, you... oh really, Horace? After uh, all, we weren't born yesterday. Uh, present company excluded, eh, Vicky? <laughs> all right, how much? Father, you Oh, can't I don't push. want anything, Horace, unless it's too, uh... Stick around a while and finish my work with Vicky. Stay here? Well, uh, well, I suppose for the present we have no alternative. And uh, in regard to that other little matter, I hope we'll exercise a proper amount of discretion. Vive la France. Shh, please. Of all the low, deceitful. How did you find out? You told me. I well, that's not true. I, I, I've never opened my mouth. No, your mind, Sugar Plum, your subconscious mind. You were pretty upset about Babette, and you did a lot of dreaming that summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in a couple of them. Well, look, why are you here? Why? Why? Well, I'm the Marines come to the rescue, keep you from marrying the wrong guy and ruining your life. And you're fighting me. Well, I'm going to marry <laughs> Oliver, and, and what do you think of that? I think that would be tragic. Look, not that it matters, but just for the record, what makes you think Oliver is so wrong? I took a good look at the guy. Well, take another look. I intend to, tonight at dinner. You'll do no such thing. You'll stay away from Oliver and everybody else and have your dinner in this room where you belong. Huh. Hmm. It's my opinion that a simple ceremony... Uh, no, thank you. Yes? A simple ceremony followed by an informal breakfast will give us the effect we're all looking for. I agree with you, Ned. Now, Benson, now. a cocktail for Mrs. Kimberley. I can't understand how he's still here. You said you'd get rid of him. No, I will, I will. I've investigated this young man. I assure you, he's quite harmless. Suppose he walks in here tonight. He won't. <laughs> Horace, what do you think? Huh? How's that? Uh, what do you think of the morning ceremony? Oh, fine, fine. Might change our luck. 
I mean, <laughs> might be just a thing. Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm a little late. Oh, my, my, my. Don't you all look nice? Mm -hmm. Horace. Oh, uh, thank you, George. My cousin, I thought you were not. French I... vermouth, huh? A little something you brought back from Paris, Horace, huh? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Mr. McCasson, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's doing some work with Victoria. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Harrington. Oh, Oliver's dad. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> nice having you with us, Harrington. <coughs> Horace, please. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kimberly. Huberly? Kimberly, Kimberly. He's with me in Wall Street. Oh, the wealthy Kimberleys. How are you? Quite well, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Vicky, you wore it. Very smart. Don't you think so? We couldn't decide what she was to wear tonight. Mm. Oh, oh, by the way, Horace, uh, you might have the lock on my door fixed. It's stuck or something. I, I had to come through Vicky's room. But look here, Vicky's room. Horace, sir. Horace, dinner, sir. Uh, Mrs. Kimberly, dinner. Oh, thank you, old boy. Shall we, Martha? What? Mm. What's the matter with that young man? He looks all right to me. Yeah, he doesn't look all right to me. He certainly looks all right to me. <clears throat> the main difference between an artist's model and other people is that uh, other people prefer to wear clothes. Victoria and I have had many interesting discussions on this very subject, and uh, <laughs> she feels somewhat as I do about it. Uh, Victoria, uh, just what is the nature of your new work? Uh, the one for which this young man is posing? Well, um... Oh, we, we haven't a, a title for it yet. We, um, we only have a, a working title. Uh, uh, you see, he's wearing a rather heavy, uh, large... Uh... Oh, we call it Adam. <clears throat> you know of Adam and Eve? Uh, speaking of honeymoons, well, I, I thought the children might spend a few weeks at our place in Bar Harbor, and then... Bar uh, Harbor? Uh, Do you think so? It sounds awfully stuffy. May I remind you, McCasson, that you're not coming along on our honeymoon, hmm? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Never can tell where I'm liable to pop up. <laughs> well, I think it... I don't think it sounds stuffy at all. I... I think it sounds wonderful. Oh, come now, Vicky. It's all right for... not for you. You're a warm-blooded woman. You need romance, excitement. You know, red wine, white moonlight, gypsy violins. Just a minute. McCasson, what was all that about red wine and white moonlight? <laughs> I was only trying to say that, you know, with Oliver, Bar Harbor, Vicky isn't going to have much of a honeymoon. Now, see here, McCasson, mm. I... Chateau Babette 38. Martha, I, uh, I think we'd better all have our coffee in the uh, chateau. Uh, the Babette. I mean, the library. Uh, yes, Well, hello, Sugar Plum. Say, you know, this is such a bad little world. You should have brought me into it sooner. That was fine behavior of yours downstairs, just fine. I suppose you're very proud of yourselves. I thought I was rather repulsive. My, you're smug, aren't you? No, I'd say confident. Well, you needn't be so confident because you're not going to get away with it. Don't forget, I created you and I can destroy you. Huh. All I have to do is stop thinking about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you said so yourself. That's right. Go ahead. Forget me. I, uh, darn tootin' I will. From now on, all I'll think about is just Oliver, 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 and by tomorrow morning, and you'll be gone. <gasps> I did it. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Don't you worry, Oliver. By tomorrow morning, you'll be gone. I promise you. Just wait and see.
morning, Nancy. Oh. Good morning, Vince. Has uh, anyone been down yet? Your mother and father, miss. Oh. They're in the library. Um, uh, no one else? If Miss Victoria means the young uh, gentleman, he hasn't come down yet. Oh, thank you. Good morning. <coughs> but uh, what a night, what a night. <coughs> hey! <coughs> really, Vicky, if you're going to keep this up, we'll have to do something about <coughs> heating the water in those dreams. <coughs> I hope you catch pneumonia. You don't really mean that, sugar boy. Your father would like to see you in the library. Oh. Alone. <laughs> ah, here she is. Victoria. Uh, Victoria, this is Mr. Brown of the Grand Central Railroad. Howdy, Mrs. Stafford. Mr. Mr. Brown seems to have recovered your furs, which you seem to have left someplace yesterday. Uh, you forgot them, you know. Left them in the drawing room when you and Mr. Stafford rushed off the train. Well, there must be some mistake. No, I, no, the I... name and address is right here in the lining. I brought them out as soon as I could myself. I wouldn't trust them to anyone else. Well, I just don't know what to say. Oh, well, don't say anything. Nothing expected, nothing asked. Always kind of like to watch over the folks in my cars. Well, listen, uh, oh, um, please. No, I couldn't think of it. No gratuities. Policy of the company. But if I can be of a little assistance to you folks, say, around about Christmas time. Brown's the name. Address is right there well, on the thank car. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Thank oh, you very much. don't mention it. No trouble at all. Oh, good morning, Mr. Stafford. How are you? <laughs> I didn't quite recognize you with those clothes on. <laughs> oh. Hey. I never saw anything as funny as you in that Indian suit. <laughs> Must have been some party, eh? <laughs> Victoria. Brown's the name. Address right there in the corner. Well, I'll see you again sometime. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Victoria. Horace. Yeah? Mr. McCasson, will you have the decency to leave us alone, if you don't mind? Just a minute, Martha. You mustn't be too hasty now. I mean, sometimes things are a lot worse than they look. I mean, better. Horace, what are you talking about? Appearances that you mustn't jump to conclusions. These are, these are modern times, my dear. We mustn't allow ourselves to become babbits. I mean, babbits. No, 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 babbits. Well, I don't see anything particularly old-fashioned about wanting to know where, when, and with whom. One's daughter is riding about on strange trains. But my dear, there's some mistake, Victoria, didn't you? Horace. Yes, dear? Will you kindly ask Mr. McCasson to leave the room? Yes. Now, see here, McCasson. Uh, <laughs> that is George. You, uh, do you? I mean, you don't mind? Do you, boy? Oh, no. No, certainly not. After all, there are certain things that a family shouldn't discuss in front of a stranger. <laughs> just as there are certain things that a stranger shouldn't discuss in front of a family. Uh, vive la France. <laughs> Uh, how true. Now, Victoria, I should like to know what you have to say for yourself. Well, I suppose you want the truth. Well, not necessarily the whole truth. Horace! I mean, of course we want the truth. What else do we want? Darling, we're your parents, and we do. We try to be as modern as possible. So, um, whatever it is, I assure you, Father and I will understand. I'm... I think you'd better sit down. All right, dear. Well, you know, uh, George, uh, Mr. McCasson, he's uh, not just an ordinary man. Uh, uh, what I mean is, uh, he's not really a man at all. Well, you, you mean that he isn't a gentleman. That's becoming increasingly apparent. Mother, you don't understand. What I'm trying to say is that, 
that he's he's not really flesh and blood. He's um, here, but he's not here at all. I mean, uh, he's just a um, figment of my imagination. Um, he stepped out of one of my dreams, you see, the other night on the train. And, uh, well, he's just out of my subconscious mind. Oh, darling, I told you, whatever it is, Father and I will understand. Won't we, Horace? Huh? Martha, why are you making such an issue? It's all perfectly obvious. The fellow stepped out of a dream. You see? Horace, what are you saying? For heaven's sakes, what's so strange about that? Psychiatry is full of this kind of thing. <laughs> you go to sleep and dream about someone and wake up, and there he is. <laughs> it doesn't take an Einstein to figure that out. <laughs> there, there was a similar case in Paris. <laughs> no, Father, hmm? no. Yeah. He really is out of my dream. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> now, tell Mother all about it. Oh, oh, I'm going out of my mind. I'm going out of my mind. Oh, well, that's nonsense. The world's full of strange things. That doesn't mean you're insane. Mother, it's nothing to worry about. He just stepped out of my subconscious, and all I have to do is, is get him off my mind, and he'll disappear like that. Yes, right back into her subconscious. Victoria, as your mother, I think I deserve something a little better than this. Oh, Martha, you're being disgustingly mid-Victorian. I'm only concerned with my daughter's happiness. Since when have you become so broad-minded? Oh, well, uh, sometimes fathers understand these things better than mothers do. Now, the important thing seems to be getting rid of the young man. You, you will try, won't you, dear? Father, you can't get rid Horace, of Horace, for goodness sake. I want you to be man enough to take that adventurer and throw him out of here immediately. No, Can't no, Martha, Victoria's not a child anymore, and she knows full well how anxious we are to get her married to Oliver. See? And if she says it's necessary for a certain young man to disappear back in her subconscious uh. before she can marry Oliver, well, I, for one, am willing to believe her. So, Martha, we mustn't question this young man any further. But, Father, you do Oh, Victoria, since your father seems unwilling to assume the simplest responsibilities of parenthood, I will. But, Mother, I'm... Do you or do you not intend to get over this nonsense and marry Oliver? But, Mother, it has nothing to do with Oliver. What I'm trying to tell you is that George happens oh, to come I out... don't want to hear any more about that young man. You are going to marry Oliver a week from this Saturday, here in this house at noon. That's final. Well, all right, Mother. One week from Saturday at home. How? Oh. And where are we off to today? We're not off to anywhere. I'm going shopping, but you're staying home. Oh, now, Vicky. You've humiliated me enough already. For two days you've hounded me. You've followed me from store to store. You've made scenes. You've done everything you could to prevent my marriage. I'm only trying to save you time and money. I warn you, Mr. McCassin, if you follow me to Hamilton Cooper City... Well, if you follow me today, I'll do something drastic. Oh, I'll... Vicky, I'll... you don't have to carry on like that. If you don't want me to go out with you, well, why don't you just say so? All right, I say so. Very well, then I'll just stay home and play a little uh, gin rummy with your father. <clears throat> a pigeon, if I ever saw one. Well, see that you do. All right. See you later, Sugar Plum. Oh! <laughs> How do you do, Miss Stafford? Oh, hello, Miss Haggerty. Congratulations. Hmm? Oh, I read about you, Mr. Harrington. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, did this just come in? Yes. <laughs> Out, Mr. Blaine? Oh, I, I guess it was just one of those things. Perhaps you'd like to exchange it for something else. No, 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 thank you. I don't think so. Just a moment till I give you a refund slip. It's John Blaine, 77 East 83rd Street. I have that, then. John Blaine, 77 East 83rd Street. 
There's you, Miss Totten. She'll just go quietly. Everything will be all right. But what so is this? So you just went ahead and did it again anyhow. I beg your pardon. I, I don't know. you didn't believe me when I told you the next time I'd do something about it, did you? Now, look, Miss, I'm afraid so there's just some so mistake. Happens, I don't my know. My father owns 51% of this place. I return tonight, Carl. And now you're going to see what you're going to see. That's what you're going to see, Miss Totten. Go ahead. Oh, hey, now, wait, wait a minute. I don't... Shh. Crazy. I never saw her before. Let's go ahead. Now, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. How do you do, Mr. Curtin? Now, sir, over there. Albert, take him out and don't be so clumsy. It was most efficient of you, most efficient of you. Not at all, Miss Stafford. Any time, any time at all. <laughs> oh, dear. Sixty-four. I don't understand. You've won every hand this afternoon. Just beginner's luck. Yes. Excuse me. Do <laughs> <laughs> you mind? No. Now? Again. Four, 81. Six. How did you know you wanted those cards? You didn't even look. <laughs> Just a feeling I had. That's triple blitz. How much? Oh, not very much. About the price of a small yacht. What? <laughs> But not furnished. Where is Mr. McCassie? He's in the library with your father. Oh, he is. Shall we have another? Hmm? One more. This is the last. Absolutely. Right. Well, I hope you're satisfied, Mr. McCassie. I guess you didn't think I'd go through with it, did you? Well, for your information, that was just the beginning. Oh, and that suit you stole didn't fool me either. What's he talking about? Oh, peculiar girl. Probably all straightened out after she's married. Uh, well, um, let's try this one. Gin. It's uncanny. And I tell you, Martha, it was amazing. As if you could see through the cards. You always have some excuse. How much did it cost you this time? Oh, it wasn't much. Just a few pennies. But I tell you, it's positively fantastic. It's fantastic that he's still walking around this house. That's it's fantastic. Whole wedding party coming over here this evening, and heaven only knows what he'll say or do. Ah, oh, well, I don't think it'll be much of a problem tonight. I think I have a little scheme for keeping everybody occupied. <laughs> um, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, some of you may not be aware that I used to be something of an amateur photographer. And in order to keep you all occupied, uh, <laughs> no, I mean entertained, I have uh, a little surprise in store for you. I... Oh, Father, no. Hmm? Oh, yes. If Oliver is going to marry you on Saturday, I think he should know a little bit more about you. And Victoria... Evans, all right. Start it right away. Benson, the lights. I made the titles myself. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Father, I may never speak to you again. <laughs> oh, that sweet arm. Mother took that one. That rather discourages us from taking pictures for the next few years. <laughs> that was her first big Halloween party. We invited children from the entire neighborhood. Where's Victoria? You see her right now. There she is. 
Victoria had difficulty making up her mind, even then. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it quite like that. My dream. Victoria certainly seems to have had a weakness for that Indian. She still has. Victoria. Victoria, what is it? Oh, she's fainted. There, stop it there. It's, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. That little boy looks exactly like you. <laughs> Don't you see? Yes, I see it. But I see a lot more than that, Vicky. I'm beginning to see your whole life story. And believe me, honey, it, it's beautiful. Now, just think. Two little kids fall in love when they're six years old. And they love each other so hard they can never love anyone else ever again as long as they live. That's impossible. Well, that's what's so wonderful about it. And this explains everything. Why you dreamed me up in that Indian suit. Why you, why you could never marry any of the others. And what's most important, Vicky, why you'll never be happy until you find him. Find him? Sure. Even Indians grow up. Little sitting bull's a big boy now. And somewhere in the world is that kid grown up. The real me. Of course, not as charming. <gasps> oh, my gosh, the store. The, the store? The store downtown today. What do you mean? Look, you've got to tell me the truth. Didn't you follow me down to Hamilton Cooper's today? Oh, you stayed home and played gin with your father. Why? Then that's who it was. It must have been. Who? Well, there was a man down there, and I thought it was you, and I had him thrown out of the store. You what? I thought it was you, and I had him thrown out. Oh, no, Vicky, you didn't. What am I going to do? What do you mean, what are you going to do? You're going to find him. Find him? Yes, and then you're going to let destiny take over. Who are you to talk back to a miracle? This thing was made in heaven, honey. And they do a very good job up there. But I'm marrying Oliver next Saturday. Don't ever say that again. Huh? Don't even think it. You'll never marry Oliver. Before very long, you're going to be Mrs. Whoever I am. And I'll be out of your life just like that. No regrets, and it's been nice knowing you. But, but you... Sure. Look, honey, believe me, don't fight it. That's the guy for you. It's too fantastic. But suppose he doesn't like me. Suppose I don't like him. Like him? You've been engaged to him for 20 years. But what if he's married? He may have a wife and nine kids. He's not married. Not after the way you were kissing each other up there. Right here on the sales slip, Mr. Efford. His name is Mr. John Blaine. Lives at 77 East 83rd Street. Oh, may I see it? Yes, of course. Thank you. Mr. John Blaine. Black lace nightgown. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, did uh, Mr. Blaine return it because uh, Mrs. Blaine didn't like it? Oh, no. Mr. Blaine is not married. Oh, he's not married? No. He's not married. Are you sure? Yes, quite sure. 
Oh. Oh, I thank you very much. That's Mrs. all right, Miss Stafford. <laughs> Here we are, lady. 77 East 83rd Street. Okay, you can keep the change. Hey, wait a minute. There must be some mistake. Yes. That's what it says, lady. 77 East 83rd Street. the cute little lady who had me thrown on it. Oh, yes. Uh, I'd like to explain about that. You see, I thought you were... Well, I mean, I thought you... All right, let's just skip it. Somebody else. But Johnny! Johnny, you don't understand. Johnny! Johnny! Johnny, I'm Victoria! Oh, well, that, that's very nice. Well, I'm Victoria Stafford. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> pleased to meet you. But Johnny, yeah. don't you remember? Almost 20 years ago, when we had that great big house over on Riverside Drive, and we had all the parties with all the kids from the neighborhood, and, and you were an Indian student. Yeah, well, <laughs> well don't it's you been remember? very nice seeing you again. The Indian suits. Yeah, we had the great big lawn, and all the kids came dressed up, and they had ice cream, and... And, uh... and we played kissing games? <laughs> and was that you? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you know? A little Vicky Stafford, huh? Oh, Johnny, I <laughs> knew you couldn't forget me any more than I could you. And, and it, well, it's the reason for everything that's happened for the past 20 years. And, and, yeah, and sure, he, 20 years. Yeah, it all ties up. George and the, the Indian suit and the swimming pool. And, oh, Johnny, I know I'm not making much sense now, but believe me, I'll explain the whole thing. And, and I do believe we ought to give it a chance and get to know each other better. And, yeah, well, as I, I said, we'll talk about when? it sometime. When? Well, sometime I'll... I'll see you around. But, but when? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, today? Maybe we'd have lunch? No, or... I, uh, I'm on duty today. Uh, tomorrow. All right, tomorrow. Where? Uh, <clears throat> Radio City on the corner. Oh, Radio City on the corner. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, Radio City is eight square blocks. Well, which corner? Oh, well, uh, you name it. Uh, uh, in front of the fountain. All right, in front of the fountain. Two o'clock. At two o'clock, yeah. Well, goodbye, Johnny. Bye, Miss Stafford. Goodbye. So long, slaves. Make it shine. So long, lover. Pets. I'm off to the ball game. Uh, who'd you say they were playing, Johnny? White Sox. Oh, I see. The White Sox. <coughs> now, what's the matter? Can't a guy get dressed up like a human being just because he's going to a ball game? Well, sure. Ain't you heard? The Yanks got a new ballpark. They're playing in Radio City, right in front of the fountain. Wise guy. Well, what do you know? It says Yankee Stadium. No. Yeah. yeah. Well. So long, wise guys. I hope you get a four along. <laughs> Hello, I, uh, I thought we had a date at... Radio City an hour from now. I know, but I was afraid you wouldn't be there. Oh, no. <laughs> Hop in. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Stafford, I, <clears throat> I've got a terrible toothache. I, I, I'm awfully sorry, but I, I couldn't sleep all night. Just throb, throb. It's been exposed nerve. I, I better see a dentist right away. But uh, I mean, maybe some other time. I'll, I'll, I'll thank you very much anyway. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
I thought I'd go to see the dentist, too. Johnny, uh, I'd just like to ask you... Why <laughs> All right. All right, let's get it over with. Here. There are nine men on each team. No, Johnny... Please, there are nine men on each team. <laughs> One side's in the field, the other side's at bat. After three outs, they change positions. Those little white square things down there are bases. Once around is a run. The team that has the most runs after nine tries wins the game. Head a boy. Any questions? Yes, Johnny. All right, go ahead. Well, I'd just like to ask why you won't let me explain what I tried to explain to you yesterday. Oh, well, that's a... Forget about that. Everybody makes mistakes. Huh? Let's just watch the ball game, huh? Fresh peanuts. Would you like some peanuts, lady? No, thank you. Well, after all, you gave me five bucks to sit in half my seat. And... Make it be in there! Make it be in there! Make it be in there! Out of the park, Joe! Out of the park! Come on, here. Hey, watch this. He's gonna give Joe a nice fat one. High and outside, and Joe's gonna knock it right out into those bleachers. I don't think so. What, what do you mean, you don't think so? To throw it low and inside to a right-hand batter, make him pull it down to short for a double play, 6-4-3. Six, 6-4-3? Four, three. Six, four, three. Short to second to first. Huh. You wouldn't like to lay a little dough on that, would you? Why not? For a buck? A buck. <laughs> Johnny? Oh, just drop me off at the firehouse. Oh. Well, um, what about dinner? What about it? Well, you have to eat somewhere. And I did win seven dollars for me. Why don't you let me take you to dinner, huh? Now, look, let's get this straight. If I want to take a girl to dinner, I ask her. She doesn't ask me. That's how I operate. Oh. Well, Besides, you probably wouldn't like it anyway. It's just a little joint downtown. Food isn't very good. Only reason I go there is because they make a little dish I like. It mm. sounds classy, but it's nothing much. Some stuff they call schnitzel viennoise. Schnitzel viennoise, Johnny! Do you really like that? Hey, watch the wheel. Oh, but Johnny, it's my favorite dish. Well, so what? <gasps> Don't you think it's unusual when two people meet and they both like the same dish? And, well, Johnny, that's... What's that's so unusual? Never... You're making well, a big never... federal case out of it. I never... It's nothing but a little lamb steak with goo on it. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. It isn't lamb, it's veal. Now, look, don't tell me. I've been eating it for years. Well, I ought to know. It's my favorite dish. <laughs> it's lamb. It's veal. Lamb. It's veal. I tell you... It's for a buck. A buck. Okay. Say, hey, Paul, when you make that uh, schnitzel viennoise, uh, what cut of lamb do you use? Monsieur, with schnitzel viennoise, we do not use lamb, we use veal. Oh, well, uh, thanks. <clears throat> well, bring us two schnitzel viennoise and another bottle of red, and I'll uh, tell Joe to play my song, eh? Très bien, monsieur. What was that? Right again. Well, Johnny, I, I'm right about little things, but when it comes to big, important Major things, Buck. I'm so... No, I don't want your money, really. <clears throat> now, listen, I when I it, make a bet and I win, I expect to get paid. When I lose, I pay off. Now, that's how I operate. Johnny, how'd you happen to become a fireman? When I was a kid, I liked to chase fires. Well, all little boys like to chase fires, but they generally get over it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're missing. I suppose it's it's all right if you're if you're not mm, tied up to anyone. Oh, I don't know. It's a nice life. You keep fit. Have plenty of time to do the things you like. I don't know, maybe if I were married, I'd <laughs> no danger of that. Hey, you don't. You like it? <laughs> Tastes good.
Johnny, do you mind if I ask you a rather personal question? Maybe, maybe not. Well, that day at the store, uh, that nightgown, uh, it's a rather expensive store and... Oh, they rob you blind. <laughs> well, uh, what I'm trying to say is that I guess she must be mighty important. Yeah, we were going to get married. You mean... And then she called it off, huh? No, I did. You did? You yeah, mean... sure. <laughs> What's the use of going through with something when you know somehow that it, it isn't right? Yeah. But uh, I must say, she took it better than the others. <laughs> you mean there are others? Yeah, there, there were three others. Each time I thought, oh, this is the real thing. Yeah. And just as we're about to pull it off, I don't know, something would something wouldn't let me and I'd just I walk, walk out. out. <laughs> <laughs> You've no idea how many presents were sent back. Oh, yes, I have, Johnny. <laughs> so I figure I'm, I'm just not the marrying kind. Oh, don't say that. Oh, Johnny, don't ever say that. Well, why not? Well, because because there's certain things about certain people and, and there's a merit, there's a destiny, there's a... Uh, Johnny, that song... Johnny, why are they playing that? Oh, because I asked them to. But why? Why that? Well, what's the matter? Don't you like it? Well, of course I do. It's my favorite song. It's mine, too. Well, <laughs> naturally, it would be, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, doesn't that seem strange to you, the number of things we both like? The baseball and the dunk and the wine and the schnitzel and the, <laughs> You're the song? You're a character. <laughs> oh, he's making a big thing out of everything. There's millions of people like that, too. Johnny... Johnny. Yeah. Johnny, will you dance with me? Now look, when I take a girl out to dinner, she doesn't have to ask me to dance. If I feel like dancing, I ask her. Now that's how I operate. There you are. Would you like to dance? I'd love to. Dance pretty well together, you know. Why, Natch? Victoria come back yet? I really can't say, sir. Well, she's either back or she's not. Then I'm afraid she's not, sir. Oh? Then I'd like to speak to Mr. Stafford. Mr. and Mrs. Stafford are both out, sir. Well, I... Oliver! Good evening! My, you're getting to be quite a stranger. Where's Victoria? And what's going on? I haven't seen her in over 48 hours. Can't get her on the phone. She's either got a headache or she's out gallivanting around heaven knows where. Oh, Oliver, Oliver. This isn't like you at all. You've always been so broad-minded about <clears throat> these things. What things? I'm not broad-minded at all. Shh, 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 shh. Don't get mad. You didn't get sore about that other thing, and that's when you really could have been upset. What are you talking about? What other thing? Well, you know, that whole nasty business on the train. Train? What train? You mean they didn't tell you? No. What is there to tell? Oh, nothing. N nothing, really. Uh, <coughs> sit down, Oliver. I want to know what you're insinuating. Well, it's, it's nothing, really. Except it explains everything. Why they uh, pushed the wedding off and why they... Uh, <laughs> wanted to get her married off so quickly. But, uh, oh, forget about it, Oliver. It's, it's probably 50% gossip, anyway. 
What's on that card? Card? The card you just put in your pocket. Oh, this card. Well, it, it's uh, just got a man's name and his phone number on it. Man? What man? Oh, uh, just some uh, silly conductor on the Grand Central. <laughs> Who said he saw the whole thing? <laughs> what whole thing? Did you know that whole mess about Vicky getting caught in her compartment with an Indian? <laughs> That's a lie. Well, probably. You know how people exaggerate. It probably wasn't an Indian at all. Oh, what, what, what was that conductor's name? Who? Uh, Mr. Brown? Brown, Brown, Brown. And the name? I mean, the number? Oh, now, Oliver, you're too big for that. You trust Vicky. You wouldn't go around sneaking behind her back, calling Mr. Brown at Scala 578 seven. You're much too understanding. Scala 5, five what? Uh, 7867. Seven. Scala 5 seven, Of course, seven. Um, I, I could give you this card, but I'd, I'd feel like a cad. Besides, you'd never use it. You're too much of a gentleman to call Mr. Brown at Scala 578 seven. Scala 5 so why don't we just forget the whole thing and, uh, and make it our own private little secret, Ollie? Hmm? So I'll uh, see you later. Hmm? Let's go to five, seven, eight, six, seven. Let's go to five, seven, eight, six, oh, seven. Mr. Harrington, your father called. He said it was most urgent. You could reach him at circle six, seven. No, no, don't. I... No numbers. Scholar five, circle eight, six, seven. I mean circle eight, five, nine. Ooh. Father five, nine, eight, six, seven. I mean circle eight, five, nine, six, urgent. Scholar five, six, eight, nine, five. Mother, uh, father, six, nine, Scala, five, six, eight, seven, five. Oh, hello, is this, is this Scala, five, eight, seven, seven, six? Does Mr. Brown of the Grand Central Railroad live here? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hello, uh, is, is this Mr. Brown of the Grand Central Railroad? It is? Oh. Uh, shut up, will you? No, no. There, there, there's something very important I want to discuss with you. Uh, where, where do you live, Mr. Brown? 149 West 183rd Street. Thanks, I'll be right over. 149 West 183rd Street. Oh. 149 West 183rd Street. I think if you take the item from 175 and mark it to 149, 149. No, 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 stop it, stop it! Well, uh... Well, it's getting kind of late. I guess I'll just be saying goodnight. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, why don't you give up? If everything was meant to oh, be There this... you go again. <laughs> I never saw a girl like you. Ever since I met you, you've been hinting around that I'm in love with but you. But you are, Johnny. We both are. Look at the evidence. It all adds up. The things we both like and the, the people we tried to marry and couldn't. Now, will you listen? That's silly. If I were in love with you, I wouldn't be just sitting around here. I'd be putting my arms around you and I'd be holding you close to me. And I'd be kissing you. I, I want to kiss you again. And again. And, then and I... again. And then I'd... I want to tell you that I love you and I... I want to marry you right away. Because she's hot tonight. Because. Because that's how you operate, Johnny. Hey, let's go see your old man right now, tonight. Tonight? Why not? Oh, oh, we just couldn't possibly. Not tonight. Well, why not? Well, we, we just can't. That's why not. My father's... Uh, well, I mean, there, there's certain things that need to be cleared up first. Well, what's the matter? Isn't a fireman good enough for him? Oh, Johnny, I didn't mean that. Then get this straight. I, I don't want any of your money oh, or Johnny, anything. Oh, Johnny, I know. That is just that... Well, I, I, I think I ought to break the news first myself. 
Well, I don't see what... My way, Johnny. You kind of like your own way, don't you? I kind of like it, too. Well, I, uh... I guess we better say goodnight. Sugar plum. What did you say? Why? I said good night. No, 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 no. I mean the other. Oh, sugar plum? Yeah, yeah. Say it. No, oh. say it all together. Good night, sugar plum. I just gave you two days off. Now you want two weeks. Well, I brought Timothy down there. He's willing to switch our vacations. How about it, Timothy? Okay by me, Chief. So you got it that bad, huh? Yeah, awful. Well, if I switch you with Timothy, you'll have to start your vacation tomorrow. Tomorrow? Holy smoke. I better go see your old man right now. I didn't know young folks still did that. Ask fathers. Oh, I'm not asking him. I'm telling him. Uh, thanks, Timothy. Not at all, Johnny. Oh, hello, Evans. Good evening, miss. Where's my father? He's in the library, miss. And where is Mr. McCasson? Mr. McCasson has gone out, miss. Gone? Of course he would be. He said you'd understand. Thank you, Evan. Ah, oh, here you are. Well, I must say, it's about time you're home. I want to know where you've been. Your mother and I have been worrying and... Father, I have great news for you. I'm getting married. Of course you are. Oh, but this time it's different. I'm really going through with it. Well, we've settled all that. But you, you, you better talk to Oliver. He's been here and But he... it isn't Oliver. It's Johnny. Johnny? Who? Who, who, who's Johnny? Johnny Blaine. I've always been in love with him. And he's always been in love with me. Who, who's always been in love with you? Johnny Blaine. And who the devil is Johnny Blaine? Where did he come from? What does he want? Me. Victoria, I, I, I've stood enough from you. It's all set for you to marry Oliver on Saturday. And now you come along with this, this brain something or other. Who is he? Who are his people? What does he do? He's a perfectly divine fireman from a station over on Navy Third Street. Fireman? And you're... And you're going to marry him? Yes, Father. But you can't. That's impossible. That's what's so Nobody right. marries firemen. But I'm going to... Now, Victoria, let, let, us, let us be very calm and, and say this has just been a, a, a bad joke. Father, just one more thing. There couldn't be. I'm afraid you'll find it rather difficult to understand about the, about the resemblance. Oh, what, oh, what resemblance? When you see Johnny looks... Come in. Mr. Oliver is here. Oh, no. He says it's most urgent. Yes. Oh, uh, Father, I'm just not up to it tonight. You, you explain the whole thing to Oliver like a good father. Victoria! Victoria! Send him in. Martha, your daughter's gone stark, raving mad. Go in and see if you can talk some sense into her. Ah, good evening. Oh, good you. Evening. I hold you to blame. You alone. You're responsible for the whole underhanded business. Oh, uh, you, you, you know about it. <laughs> you didn't think I would, did you? You didn't think I'd find out. Now, Oliver, you I... thought you'd dangle me on a puppet like a string, uh, uh, march me down the aisle with my eyes wide open. Now, see here. Well, you didn't get away with it. I've got a few friends around here too, you know. Now, Oliver, I... and I'll tell you something else. The engagement's off. The wedding's off. And as far as that fancy daughter of yours is concerned, you can, you can give her back to the Indians. Uh, Indians, firemen. Ah, there you are. Huh? Well, I've settled everything thanks to you. I've brushed her off and everything's settled. 
No. Come to think of it, there's one thing I haven't settled. One little thing I've wanted to do since I first laid eyes on you. Oh. Oh. Good evening, yes, sir. Well, good evening. We're out a little late this evening, aren't we, sir? Huh, are, are we? I said a little late, sir. This is quite a shack. What time is a 50 cent tour? What's that, sir? Uh, watch those drapes, though. You know, this place is a fire trap. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, skip it. Uh, is Mr. Stafford in? Yes, sir. He's in the library. Would you tell him Mr. Blaine uh, <clears throat> would like to see him? Blaine, sir? Yeah. Blaine. Johnny Blaine. B-L-A-I-N-E. Blaine. <laughs> Was <laughs> well, there anything wrong with it? No, sir. If that's the way you wish it, sir. <clears throat> Come in. I beg your pardon, sir. Somebody wants to see you. What do you mean, somebody? Well, he says his name is Johnny Blaine. Johnny Blaine? Yes, sir, but he looks just I like... I don't care what he looks like. Send him in. Very good, sir. McCasson some other time. I'm expecting someone. Well, I'm afraid you've made a mistake, sir. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Blaine. What? Blaine. B-L-A-I-N-E. Blaine. Not Johnny Blaine. Ah, uh, Johnny Blaine, yes. The fireman? Yes, sir, the fireman. Well... Oh, so you better watch that fire hazard. Yes, yes. Well, I suppose I should at least thank you for one thing. At last, coming out in the open, showing your true colors. I beg your pardon? You know, for the first time, this whole thing's beginning to make sense. You always were Johnny Blaine, weren't you? Well, as long as I can remember, I... Never a model. A model? You yeah. never were McCasson, nor was Johnny Blaine. And she knew it all the time. What is all this? All right. Let's forget McCasson. No McCasson. Never was. Never existed. If you say you're Johnny Blaine the fireman, I accept you at your words. You're Johnny Blaine the fireman. Thanks a lot. Blaine, I'm an old man. I can't take much more of it. Now, if you want to marry her, she wants to marry you. In view of everything that's happened, I think you should get married as quickly as possible. Well, just what do you mean by that? And so far as your being a fireman's concerned, well, I can press a button and that'll all be changed. Now, just a minute. If I want something changed, I'll change it. Nobody has now, to now, change it. Now, now, Blaine. Now, just because you've got $18 million in your other pants and you own 50% of New York City, a fireman isn't good enough for your daughter. Now, Blaine, don't get excited. Ooh, but let a fire break out. <laughs> oh, then everything's different. We're heroes. Everybody loves us. We can carry Aunt Nellie through the flames wrapped in her flannel nightgown. Or we can risk our necks getting out your stocks and bonds wrapped in a wet towel. Now, Blaine, That's please right. believe me, I've got nothing against firemen. Yeah. I love firemen. Why, one of our best mares was part fireman. Come on, let's have a drink on it. Well, I, I don't think I want... Well, all right. Ah, uh, here we go. Thanks. To our glorious fire department. Oh, thanks. Oh, Horace, there you are. I've just been having a talk with Victoria. And believe me, we have no other choice. We've simply got to get that girl married. Please. You know, you know Oliver. And that big mouth of his. In two hours, it'll be all over New York that Victoria was caught on a train with that Indian. Mouth, how's that? I say, oh, hush. I say this fireman is a blessing. Martha, please. And if he'll have her, we should marry her to him immediately. Ship them off on a honeymoon until this all blows over. Well, I guess I don't have to be hit on the head with a ton of bricks. Now, now, son, don't get the wrong idea. For heaven's sake, McCasson, will you keep out of this, it's none of your affair. The name is Blaine, lady. B-L-A-I-N-E, Blaine. Don't be ridiculous. And take a good look at the face, because you're never going to see it again. <clears throat> and that's for that daughter of yours. She's a little too smart for herself. Thought she could go out on the town and buy herself a fireman. Get him to pull her chestnuts out of the fire. And what you can tell her from me, she got the wrong boy. Because I don't want any part of her. But oh, Johnny, Johnny, there's so much you don't understand. You, you tell it to that guy on the train. Why, did I say something wrong? What's got into George? That's not George, Mother. It's Johnny. That's not Johnny. Johnny. Who is 
is Johnny? Uh, as far as I can figure out, Johnny used to be George. That is, used to be McCassin. And George, I mean Johnny, was a model. I mean an Indian. Only all the time he's a farmer and stole my ties. And Martha, remember that day, 26 years ago, when the doctor came out and said, Mr. Stafford, you are the father of an eight-pound baby girl? Yes, dear. Well, I'm going upstairs and trying to forget it. Johnny, listen. Listen, it's not like it sounds. Johnny, please let me explain. Look, you had a great idea. You almost bought yourself a husband. Well, it didn't work out. But, Johnny, it's all true. I was on the train with another man, and he was dressed like an Indian. Only it was you. Johnny, I know it's hard for you to understand, but it just so happens that there is another you. That's impossible. Now, that's what's so wonderful about it. Look, what kind of a sap do you take me for? But, Johnny, you don't understand. I made him up. I, cre I created him. I, he just came right out of my subconscious. I had to because I was in love with you. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, don't you see? I've always been in love with you, and I am now. Look, I haven't been on a train in two years. Johnny, I know it's hard for you to understand, but you've just got to believe me. There was this other man, this George McCasson, but he's gone now forever, and he's not coming back as long as we have each other. Your mother was right, Miss Stafford. You ought to get yourself married right away. But... Not yet, eh? <laughs> Well, when he comes in, tell him to get in touch with his father. It's very... Never mind, here he is now. Where in the world have you been? I've been trying to reach you. Well, did you hurt your hand? Uh, it's nothing. Oh. Father, I... Uh, I just call off the wedding. You've done what? I call off the wedding to Victoria. Oliver, we're in a lot of trouble down at the Washington office. We've got to get the staff and money behind us, or we're out in the cold. Three million dollars. Oh. Uh... But, Father, there was this Indian on the train. Indian? What do I care about Indians? Victoria was taking a trip with this Indian. I don't care if she went to Niagara Falls with many ha-ha. But, Father, it's, it's... It's a matter of honor. Honor? You can buy a lot of honor for three million dollars. And this Saturday at noon, Indian or no Indians, you're going to marry Miss Victoria Stafford. Is that perfectly clear? Yes, Father. I want to report a fire. Now, where is it? 785th. Beverly. Hey, that's her. That's her house. Come on. Do you, Oliver H.P. Harrington, Take Victoria Stafford to be your lawful wedded wife. And do you solemnly promise that you will love, honor, and cherish her until death shall separate you? I do. To be your lawful wedded husband. And do you solemnly promise to love, cherish, and honor him until death shall separate you? Yes. Yeah. 